Right, 14 March 2021, and today I want to tackle a very, very difficult subject, and this is actually one of the saddest things that I've ever had to deal with this year in 2021, and it's to do with Mary Chiwenga and General Chiwenga. The situation there has reached a very, very bad level, and it's starting to affect levels that go as high as Idim Nangagwa. And if you look at the article that came out today, and this article came from Newshawks, it shows that there is a lot of problems to do with the military in Zimbabwe, and it needs to be sorted before it gets out of hand. There is going to be a very, very big problem which involves the military. And what Mary Chwenga said today was very, very re revealing. But before I start, I want to give you guys an introduction. I, I don't know if you're going to like this. <laughs> I'm working on on my intro, and that is going to be one of the clips that is going to be in my intro. Um, Koma Gringo there, greeting Gambakwe Media viewers. So let's let's get going. And I, I want to say, if what Mary Chwenga is saying is correct, then Idim Nangagwa and Valerio Swanda have let down not only Mary Chwenga, but they've let down a lot of people in Zimbabwe. So I want to go through her accusations. What Mary Chwenga is saying is that the military is being used by General Chwenga to abuse her. And she gives a lot of examples. So let's go through these examples and then let me give my view in a short 15 to 20 minutes. So firstly, Mary Chwenga says, General Chwenga sent soldiers to intimidate people at her office in Dombosha. And everyone at the office ran away. People were scared. About 20 people who used to work at her office have ran away. Before they, were, they ran away, they were ordered by soldiers to load all her belongings into a soldier's truck and they went away with it. They also took away files. They took away information about the business. They took away basically everything from the office. So that she's saying this is a big, big problem. Then recently, she's saying soldiers broke into her offices in Highlands. So the war is very strong, but someone came with big equipment, and they brought down the equipment. Now, let's go to the third accusation. Have you tried, so this is the, the journalist here. She's asking, have you tried to engage the commander of the Zimbabwe Defense Forces to find out why Chiwenga is being allowed to use soldiers for his domestic affairs? So she says, yes, we have. She has written a letter to Valerius Wanda, and her, let, her lawyer, Beatrice Mtetwa, has also written a letter to him. She, she says, I've also written to PV Swanda to say your soldiers continue to terrorize my office because the vice president doesn't have soldiers. Soldiers serve under PV, so they belong to him. What she's saying is that soldiers that are doing all these things, they are not reporting to Chiwenga. He's no longer the, the commander of the defense forces. So basically what Valerio Spanda is doing is he's being used for this domestic dispute. Does Valerio Spanda have power or is General Chiwenga the one who's got power? That is a very, very important question 
that she's asking here. Why are you doing this to me or to my office? Why are you doing it? For what reason? So we have engaged him, but he has not responded. So Valerius Vanda has been conducted, but he has not responded. His soldiers are going there. They, they are attacking this, this woman's offices and he has not responded to the letters that she wrote. He has also not responded to the letters from her lawyer. Now let's go to the issue of CBZ Bank. You understand that Mary Chuenga was banking at CBZ. And if you look at what she's saying here, let us move to the issue of money. Last year, it was reported that ZB, uh, CBZ froze, has frozen your account. Did they finally unfreeze, unfreeze them? And can you now access your money? Mary Chuenga says, I do not know what to call it. They say that if I want money, I must apply for it. So in December, I applied for money and they did not give me. They also did not give a reason why. Then in January, I said to them, I needed money for school fees for my children. They said to me, write a letter. I wrote a letter, but no money. In February, I asked them if they were taking me along after Newswalk reported the issue, right? So I asked them, do you want to give me money or you're just pulling me along? I told them I have international payments. I've got equipment that I bought in China that needs to be paid for. She has medical bills in South Africa that needs to be settled. They said they could make a plan on the medical bills, but said it would be difficult to pay for my equipment. I don't know how I'll pay for them. So CBZ Bank is also abusing this woman. If there's no court order to freeze her funds, the bank has got no right to freeze her funds. And as, if, as far as I know, I don't think they've got a, a, a court order stopping her from doing things like paying for the doctor or paying for her lawyers. So let's say last month, I told them I need money for salaries. And they said I should write a letter and then give, and they gave me the money. But I wrote another and they did not give me. So what they're basically doing is the bank, they are treating her like a minor and they decide whether to give her money or not to give her money. So we've got two issues here. The military is physically going to interfere with the business and she's not allowed to get any money from the money that she has in the bank. And remember this money, is not Chiwenga's money. It's her money from her business. And anyway, everyone has a right to have access to money. And I think let's continue. I want to continue reading this before I go into my opinion. And um, so she says, I've got to ask for money. I have got to apply for my own money, which most of the time they've refused to give me or they just do not respond. Right, so let's keep going. So did they explain to you why they have frozen your bank accounts? And Mary Chuenka says, no, they just lied that they have never frozen my bank accounts. And I told them, I'm going to sue them because they were refusing with my money. I needed to pay for fees for my two children and they refused with that money. From January to December without money, you move with a big bow. So you know that Mary is being sued for $6,000. She owes somebody $6,000 and her money is stuck at CBZ Bank. I have a son who is in lower six now and a daughter doing form one. So for those two, I have to ask for money and I ask for money from his excellency. Now, this is where I... I said Mnangagwa is being dragged into this issue. So there are two instances where Mnangagwa is being uh, dragged into this issue. So this is the first instance. I asked for money from His Excellency, President Emerson Mnangagwa. He did not give me and he did not respond. So this is the first instance where Mnangagwa is now being dragged into the issues of Mary Chuenga and General Chuenga. She has had to go to Idi Mnangagwa to ask for money. And Mnangagwa has not said anything. 
He has not even talked to the bank. I think a simple phone call to CBZ Bank to tell them, release this woman's money. They'll release it. But he has not responded. Now, let's go to the issue of health. How is your health now? How are you feeling? She says, my health is in, in trouble for two reasons. Firstly, local doctors have been threatened by my husband not to look after me medically, and they are afraid to speak out. I do not have a physiotherapist. I need a physiotherapist, but they were also threatened. And they said they were scared to meet with me because VP threatens them, and this is what they said. They are afraid of the VP. They were told at work not to look after me. So remember that the soldiers that were treating Mary, so these are people who work in the military, they were told at work not to look after him. So this, once again, brings the military. A military doctor who is looking after a former uh, second lady, they've been told not to treat her. And I, I think this is where the abuse of the military also comes in. We appealed against that court ruling. So let, let's go to, to, to the one, one paragraph up. They are afraid of the VP. They were told at work not to look after me. So they don't help me. And for me to go and get international medical attention, they have refused with my passport. We appealed against the court ruling at the Supreme Court, and we lost. And I asked President Mnangagwa to give me another passport so that I can get medical attention. He said he was going to secure a passport for me and money to go and get medical attention. But it's all out of the window. As you can see, I'm still here. I am still very much in pain. I'm still suffering. Medically, not much has happened. So this is the second instance where Mary Chuenga has had to go to Idim Nangagwa. She asked him for a passport. He said he'll get a, a passport and then he did not deliver. Is Mnangagwa also being stopped by General Chuenga from interfering? W what is happening here? Because obviously, if you say, I'll give you a passport, you should be able to give someone a passport. If you're a president, you can do anything in any country. There is no country in the world where a president can fail to give someone a passport, especially someone who is a former wife of a vice president. They, they can easily give this passport if they wanted to, but they're not doing so. So let's go to the next paragraph. I need medical attention. And if I can get it sooner rather than later, because I've come a long way talking about my treatment. So you remember that Mary is claiming that her hands were injured during the bombing. I, I think that was a white city bombing. If she was bombed, it means she was on national duty. She needs to get treatment. But these guys are not giving her treatment. She's not getting any joy from her husband. She's not getting any joy from the president. Right, what is your update with regards to your divorce case? Where is it now? I have no idea. I was supposed to have, it was supposed to be heard on the 8th of February, but it was canceled. But really, what I would like is for all this to be behind me because I want my children, my properties, my matrimonial benefits, my spousal benefits, which I'm supposed to have been getting since last year. I want my vehicles and I want my life to go on. But I also would like an apology from the vice president. He owes me an apology for everything that is done to me, my family, because he knows what he said did never, never happened. So what Chuenga said, is that when he was in South Africa with Mary, she ripped off the drips and all the, the, the medical equipment which was keeping him alive. And I think this is what she's referring to here, that it never happened. He doesn't even believe his own lies. He knows that nothing like that happened. So one day, I would like an apology from him for everything that he has put me through. It will just be an apology, really, but nothing can take away what he has done. It doesn't matter that he has lied to and that it is why he did what he did or whatever. Nothing can take away your own husband sending you to prison. If Even if I had done it, 
he could have said, you have gone too far, might and I. You went too far. And you would have just taken me back to my family, not to throw me in prison. That was extreme. And he knows what that he overreacted. And it will eat him for whatever amount of time was left in his life. But yeah, it really said, I looked for him so well, and I looked after him so much, that what he did was most painful. That your husband looked that your husband that you looked after with your heart would do that. I looked after him beyond expectation. I even surprised myself because of the way I looked after him. You even look at yourself and say, at 40, I'm looking after somebody who is this sick. You know, it was like I did not have a life. He was my life. And then when he was ill, I even stopped having a life. I even stopped having a life. And it just became a life for him. So all of that, imagine you have a life with your husband and your children. Then all of a sudden, it is, for, it is life for him. You know you are in like a 24-hour doctor. My husband is a baby at heart. So she's now talking about Chiwenga. When he's sick, he cries. When he's worried, he's unhappy, he cries. And I go to comfort him. I will try everything to get him medical care, calling doctors. At one time, when he, he got sick, I made all efforts to go, get hold of the president who was not around. And eventually, the president came back. I would do everything to cater for him. I did everything, everything you can think of when taking care of a sick person. And my payment for that was prison. When you are expecting your husband to come buy a cow to take you to your family as gratitude, he comes back and he sends you to prison. You can imagine. right? So this is what Mary Chuenga is saying about her treatment from General Chiwenga. She's making some serious accusations. One of, the, of which is that Valero Swanda soldiers are going and interfering with her. They are threatening people. They're also threatening her. They're threatening the people around her. And then they've also gone to her office in Highlands and they've crushed a wall that is there. And she's saying, how can soldiers under a commander be able to do all this when Chiwenga is no longer in charge of those soldiers? Is, Chiw is Chiwenga really in charge of the military? She is raising that question. Very, very important question that she's raising. Then we also have the issues to do with CBZ. Is CBZ taking orders from General Chiwenga? Have they been threatened? Are they still a bank? Or are they now using other operating standards? Does a bank do as it pleases with someone's money? Or a bank has to follow rules? They have to be confidentiality. They have to give you access to money when you want it. Are they still following those rules? Or are they now under the control of the military? What is Chuenga's influence in the bank? Very, very important question. Then on two occasions, Mary has gone to Idim Nangagwa for assistance. She has not received assistance. Is Idim Nangagwa able to bend or to change the mind of General Chiwenga, who is his junior? Can Idim Nangagwa say to him, what you're doing is now out of line. You need to stop so that you don't embarrass the whole country with your own marital issues. So the first one, obviously, is the issue of money. How do you expect the woman to live with no money? Secondly, the issue of the passport, of treatment. If you are denying her treatment in Zimbabwe, are you saying she must die? So that, those are the, the questions that obviously they arise. Th those questions are arising. And this issue is dragging in not only General Chwenga, not only Mary Chwenga, they are starting to drag in the commander of the defense forces. Then they're also dragging in the commander in chief, who is Idim Nangagwa. Why is Idim Nangagwa allowing such a situation, such a report as is coming out of the press today? Very, very embarrassing. It shows a lack of order. It shows 
someone who is totally out of control and out of touch with the reality. Because a military, the, the military of Zimbabwe, if you start being able to use the military to send them to solve your personal dispute with your wife, we are coming back to the same issues that we had with Mugabe, where he would just use the military for anything that he wanted. So very, very sad. And I find this is one of the things that when an investor is looking at Zimbabwe, they're saying, are we really having a country here? Or are we, what is the purpose of the, of the Operation Restore Order? I do not see it if you continue in this way. And I think Erisha has got the right words here. He's saying Zimbabwe is now a pure banana republic led by clueless psychopaths. I do not think everyone is a psychopath in the government. I just think there's one or two of psychopaths in the government of Zimbabwe. Um, right, anyone putting money in a Zimbabwe bank, do that at your own risk. I think what CBZ is doing makes Mashingo T1 quite correct. If you are a bank, you must follow some rules. And those rules must not be broken, even if a soldier comes. They would rather shoot up the whole place than for you to break the rules of banking. Otherwise, what we're seeing now is not banking. CBZ is just a joke right now. If they're doing this, if they're telling someone to apply for their own money on a piece of paper and then they don't respond, what is the purpose of banking? Albert Kumalo, this is a good question. Where are those women's organizations that fight for their rights? And I think they're all afraid. The real women's organizations in Zimbabwe are very, very afraid. Uh, a lot has happened. I've never seen the, the women's organizations doing anything. And I think Sakile, you are saying the same. Under the current system, the women's organizations do not do much. The Central Committee has become stronger after the fall of Mugabe. I don't think the Central Committee, I think this is to do with General Juwenga, basically. I do not think ZANU of Central Committee is going to sit and say, let us deny uh, treatment to Mary Chuenga. So they have to deal, especially the president, and the, uh, he has to, to deal with this situation. Is General Chuenga that powerful that he can do whatever he likes? A story like this is, is embarrassing for for a country that has got a president, for a vice president to do this kind of thing. It's almost a disrespect of your of the chain of command. How do you do that? And what does it say about the order of who is senior? Because if you, if you know that your senior is going to come and find you've done something like this, you should be saying, maybe I shouldn't be using the army for these kind of things. Then let's go to no no. Mary Panga are VP. At no Mozilla Jesus open your work. Nas Arora, we are Ambra. How could a noise? VP this, VP that. Jacaita, a Tuesday, could the Vaso Muda. Okay, I do not agree with you on the one part. I agree with you on everything else. The last part only, I do not agree with you. If you have a dispute with your wife. I do not think you should be using the army for it. And I don't think you should be going to force banks to do things that are not, they are not supposed to do. You should be using other methods. And this is where I disagree with uh, this whole situation. Lord Bartley, she's saying this is a domestic affair. It has nothing to do with Zimbos at large. And my point is, if your army is being used to do these kind of things, then it has got everything to do with you as a Zimbabwean. Your army is not supposed to be used for these kind of things. Right, I want to go to the last comment, and then I, I think we'll wrap this up. Shuenga must be cautious if he wants to be the future president of Zimbabwe. That can be used to decampaign him. And I, I think, I, I do not know the temperament of, of General Chumwenga, but what I know is that he has not handled this issue very, very carefully. What I was, I thought he was going to do, 
I thought he was going to quickly move, get the divorce, get Mary out of his life, move on and do other things. But at the moment, he is now leaving this situation to become a problem from Nangagwa. He's letting this situation become a problem for Valerio Svanda because people are starting to question who is really in charge of the army. After this report, that is the question that is going to come. How does Chiwenga, who has got nothing to do with the military, have the power to call people to do what they did at her Highlands office or at her other office in Domboshawa? What power is he using and which unit is, is doing this work? Is he using his speci specific unit, which is allocated to him, to do this? And why is then Valerio quiet when that happens? Or is he... No, the questions that are just too much and, and it becomes difficult to understand. And an article like this in the newspaper, very, very bad for the country. And I think what I want to, to, to conclude with is we are slowly moving towards the next elections and not much is being done. I mentioned this yesterday. We need to be working on making our country a habitable business place, so a place where business can happen. But the guys in government, the guys in the opposition, they are focused somewhere else. Their focus is not on making Zimbabwe a great place to do business. And it is left to us as the ordinary citizens to make our country work. The, the current government that we have, they are making a lot of mistakes. They are, they are taking the eyes off the ball and they are letting the image of the country continue to be tarnished by useless affairs, useless issues that, that do not benefit anybody. And we're losing time. And, and this is terrible. This is something that made me very, very sad when I read it. You know, Mary uh, Mbaiwa's father uh, tried to close my channel last year with, with his friend, um, Chiangwa. But I, I, this has got nothing to do with that. I just feel sad that these guys, uh, in fact, they did close my channel. So I, I was very unhappy with these guys. But here we are. We have a situation here that is making the country look very, very bad. And I hope that we don't get another news item coming on General Chwenga and his wife, or General Chwenga and the wife of another guy in Marondera and so on. The, the chain of command just needs to be sorted out. Someone needs to be told this has to end. This has to end. We can't have a court case that goes on and on. And um, yeah, so, Munyaradzi Mufara, you're saying citizens like you who are flip floppers are dangerous. Uh, I don't know what you're talking about, man. I, I don't flip flop. I'm, I'm just doing my job, which is to talk about what is happening. But if you want, I can invite you here and we'll see how you do. Uh, I want to talk to you, man. What's up, me on my number? We have you live here. We'll talk about the situation in Zimbabwe together. Right, I think this is all I wanted to say. Very sad situation. You can see the story in a newspaper called Newshawks. I do not know who owns this newspaper at all, but you can. The journalist here was Bridget Manavire, so I don't know who owns this newspaper, but they seem to have a lot of information and a lot of access to all these high-level people. I get a lot of stories from them uh, when I want to see what is happening. So. Maybe, who knows? Who knows who owns this paper? And who knows why this story has come out at this point? So thank you very much for watching. And I'll be back tomorrow with Mr. Tinashe Jonasi so that we can continue with our discussions. We need to get to the point where we clarify a lot of issues. And I enjoy my Monday sessions with Mr. Tinashe Jonasi. And I know all of you do enjoy. So we'll talk, to, uh, we'll talk again tomorrow, same time, 9, 10 p.m. Thank you very much and good night.